Hey, we have here today another integral from the MIT integration. Bay. This one's from 2023, regular season number eight. We have the integral from zero to pi x sine to the fourth x dx. Okay, the thing I wanna look at first is just having a trig function. And with these bounds from pi to zero, I think what I'm gonna do is a u substitution. And I think it's gonna work pretty nicely. So for this u substitution using the bounds, I'm gonna say my u is gonna be pi minus x. And I'll take a derivative and we find that du is gonna be minus dx. And what we get when we plug a pi in here, we'll have a zero for our upper bound. Plugging the zero in, we get pi, so we flipped our bounds. And then for x, I should get an x value real quick so we can just rearrange this and we can find that x is equal to pi minus u. So I'll write that in, our pi minus u, and then we're gonna have sine pi minus u, and this is gonna to be to the fourth du. But I'm gonna have this minus sign here but what I'm gonna do with the minus and the du, I'm just gonna bring that out front of the integral and use it to flip my bounds to get it back to what we had. So this is gonna be going from zero to pi again. And now here for sine of pi minus u, we've got a nice identity for that. This is the supplementary angle formula. So this is the same thing as sine of u. And we could show this really quick using the different angle formula. So we could take sine pi minus u using different angle and write this as sine pi times cosine u minus sine u cosine of pi. Well here sine of pi is going to zero, so this first part's just zero. This here, cosine of pi is minus one, so multiplying minus one times minus is gonna give me this sine of u right here. So what I can do is just change this sine pi minus u, we can just change this back to just u. And then from here what I'm gonna do is just a variable change, because this is a definite integral, I can change it back to x if I want, and that's gonna help me so I can try to add it to our original integral. So we'll write this as pi minus x, sine x to the fourth dx. And we're starting to see the similarity here to our original integral. But one more thing I wanna do, I wanna distribute this sign in here and write this as two integrals. What I'm gonna to do to separate this is, on the first integral, I'll bring a pi up front because that's a constant value. So we're going from zero to pi of sine to the fourth x dx. And then for the second integral, we're just same bounds, but we're gonna just have x sine to the fourth x dx. And then from here what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna label my original integral as i, but then we notice that this is the exact same integral right here, so this is also gonna be i. So what I can just notice, if this whole thing is i, and I add one copy of this integral i to both sides here, we're gonna have two i, and so what we're left with is just two i is gonna be equal to this piece right here. Let me just copy that one down. But now we're just left with an integral that we can do. So we're getting pretty close to a solution. And what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna divide off this two right here so we have it so we're just solving for our integral and we'll have a pi over two up front. So we'll just take this sine fourth x and reduce it with power reduction. So we have this formula, we know that sine squared x can be written as one half, one minus cosine of two x. Because this is a fourth power, we'll need to square this whole thing. So I'll have one half squared in front and then we're gonna have one minus cosine two x squared. Now this is going to be, now half squared is going to be one fourth, and then we'll just multiply this whole thing out. So we're going to have one minus two cosine two x plus cosine squared two x. And then again, we'll use the power reduction on for cosine, really similar to sine. So for cosine squared two x, I can write this as one half plus one half, and then we double this angle. So it's going to be cosine of four x. And so we'll plug that back in here. And then from here, I'm just gonna take my one plus a half and make this three halves, just to kind of consolidate terms. So we'll have a three halves here and get rid of that. And then we'll just plug this back into our integral and we can continue. Okay, so from our previous board, I just plugged this back in and I just brought this one fourth out front of the integral and I'm actually gonna multiply this times to the pi over two and write this as pi over eight now. And I think we're ready to integrate this. So just integrating three halves, we're gonna have three halves x then integrating here, we're gonna to need to pull a two out in the denominator, so this is just gonna be sine of two x. And then here we need to pull a four out, so we're gonna end up with one over eight sine to the fourth x. And this is all evaluated from zero to pi. And from here, you can see that when we plug zero in, this whole thing is gonna be zero, every term is gonna be zero. When we plug pi in for sine four of x, this is going to zero. When we plug pi in here, this is going to zero. So we just need to take our pi and plug it in right here. And so this is gonna give me pi over eight times three over two pi. So we'll just multiply that together and we get three over 16 pi squared.
So that's it, pretty good problem. We just had to get the use substitution at the beginning and then it was pretty much smooth sailing after that. So we'll stop it there. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a great day.